all right so we are going to read the equation and then we solve the equation together so the equation reads two smooth spheres a and b of equal radius and equal mass lie at rest on a smooth horizontal table sphere a is given a speed of u and it impinges obliquely with b the direction of motion of a before impact makes an angle of pile on four with the line of center of the spheres Roman one Find the speed of A and B after collision, leaving your answers in terms of U and E, where E is the coefficient of restitution between the two spheres. Given that sphere A is deflected by the collision through an angle of pylon 6, Roman 2, show that E, which is the coefficient of restitution between the two spheres, is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 minus 3. All right, so that that was a question that came in June 2021 for that math paper three. So the very first thing we are going to do is we are going to we are going to draw our diagram what is happening. So I'm going to begin with the first case that is before collision. Now before collision, this is what is happening. My sphere A is moving with a speed of u, and it is the 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 the, the speed is actually at an angle with respect to the lines joining the centers now since you, you see them they are circles and not really spheres because um, spheres are actually in three dimensions but when we are drawing it on a plane they become circles so that's why we see circles here not spheres all right so here this line here this horizontal line here is a line joining the centers of the two spheres and the, the speed of my of, of the of the first sphere that is sphere a is at an angle which is pylon pylon 4 i'll just call it theta here we are going to replace our theta later on with pylon 4 and then we solve now i can assume their masses to be m and now they have equal radar that, that's another thing now it impinges obliquely with b so um here is a speed it makes an angle of 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 theta which is pylon 4 with respect to the line of centers so um this angle theta here is the same as the angle theta here. So I can resolve the component of the speed into the vertical component and the horizontal component. Why are we doing so? Because motion always takes place in or motion always takes place along the line of centers. So it is very important to note motion takes place along the line of centers. So I need the component that is along the line of centers, which is what I am going to be using for my speed because motion takes place along the line of centers all right so if you resolve this component you're going to get a vertical component to the u sine theta and the horizontal component to the u cos theta so um with that that's before that's before collision now what happens after collision after collision now you have um the, the sphere a is actually it makes a different angle that is the final velocity of the sphere a makes a different angle i can call it alpha and again it is also deflected by an angle of pylon 6 we are going to use this concept later and i'm going to explain to you what deflection by an angle means so the sphere a makes an angle let me say alpha with the line of centers that's the velocity after impact so since motion takes place along the line of centers then the vertical component of the of the initial speed of my sphere a remains unchanged but the horizontal component changes since motion takes place along the line of centers now my my sphere b originally was was at rest and then um, a was given a velocity of a speed of u now finally my b is going to have a a, a, a speed of vb i'm just going to call it vb all right and then along the line of centers i'm going to call the velocity of a va but perpendicular to the line of centers it remains unchanged it is still um u sine theta all right so we are this is before in before collision and this is after collision so we are going to use these two concepts and then we apply the required laws to get the values of the speeds of a and b after collision in terms of u and e Alright, so that was um, this is scenario that was happening. So firstly, we have to find the speed of A and B after collision. So since motion takes place along the line of centers, 
and my theta is equal to pi on 4 it means that the velocity of my particle you know the velocity is um, a vector quantity so i need to represent it in the i and the, um in, in the vector form so the horizontal component goes with i and the vertical component goes with j so the horizontal component of my velocity remember this u here is in bold meaning velocity so the velocity of a is u in bold is equal to the horizontal component times the, the the unit vector in that direction so horizontal component is u cos theta the theta is pi on 4 it was given originally that was the the angle that my velocity of the speed of a which is u makes with the line joining the centers of the two spheres was pi on 4 so we get u cos pi on 4 in the i direction plus u sine pi on 4 in the j direction so doing that we get our u which is in bold that is a velocity is equal to the speed root 2 on 2i two plus the speed root 2 on 2j two now we are going to use two principles first the principle of conservation of linear momentum which says that momentum before collision equals to the momentum after collision now momentum before collision i'm going to sum the momentums of a and b because there were two bodies and then momentum after collision i'm going to sum the momentums of a and b so applying that we get momentum before collision momentum is the mass momentum of of a body is the mass times its velocity or its um its speed so um since motion takes place along the line of centers then i'm going to consider only the velocity of my particle a along the line of centers that is parallel to the line of centers which is u cos theta which is um u root 2 on 2 because it is the component along the line of centers i'm not going to um, touch this guy all right so the mass of a is m which i assume times its velocity along the line of centers plus the mass of b is m since b was at rest it is zero equal to the mass of a is m times now the final velocity because momentum before collision equals momentum after collision so before collision we use the initial velocities and after collision we use the final velocities now my final velocity of b i can call it vb and then my final velocity of a i'll call it va and this va is what is the velocity of a along the line of centers because that is where um, motion takes place all right so simplifying that we get 2va we multiply um we here you're going to cancel all through by m and then you get you multiply all through by 2 you get 2va plus 2vv to be equal to u times root 2 you can call that equation 1 now the next principle we are going to use is the newton's experimental law which says that the coefficient of restitution between the space is equal to the the difference between the velocity of separation divided by the the difference between the velocity of approach velocity of separation is after collision and velocity of approach is before collision all right so we get va minus vb divided by u ub minus ua but ub is zero because it's the initial velocity of b and then ua is still the velocity which is u root 2 on 2 sorry the speed which is u root 2 on 2 since it is along the line of centers all right so simplifying that we get uh, we cross multiply and then we simplify to get 2va minus 2vb to be negative u root 2e we can call that equation 2 now we need to solve for va and vb and we express it in terms of a and b because those are the speeds of my 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 sphere a and and the sphere b after collision so to solve these two equations simultaneously to get va and vb i can first of all start by adding the two equations if i add the two equations vb is going to disappear i will get 4va to be equal to u root 2 on u root 2 minus u root 2 times e so you can factor out u root 2 and we get 4va to be u root 2 into 1 minus e so my va is going to give me u divided by 4 into 1 minus e times root 2 now similarly i can subtract the two equations so that um, VA is going to fall off. So taking equation 1 minus equation 2, the left hand side is 4VB. The right hand side, I will, I will take this minus this. So the minus sign here becomes positive because I'm subtracting. I'm taking minus a negative number. So I be, uh, it becomes U root 2 into 1 plus E. Now I can divide both sides by 4 and I get my V of V to be U on 4 into 1 plus E times root 2. So those are the velocity of velocities, the, the speeds of A and b after collision all right so 
given that sphere A is deflected by the collision through an angle of pylon 6, what are we to we are to show that the coefficient of restitution between the spheres is equal to 2 root 3 minus 3. Alright, so after collision, let's just say the, 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 the sphere A makes an angle of alpha, as you can see. So alpha, the velocity of the of, of sphere A makes an angle of alpha with the line of centers. So maybe we can let the angle of deflection of the sphere A to be phi and the angle of deflection is pi on 6 but I will just generalize it so let's just say the angle of deflection of the sphere A is phi and theta, um, theta plus phi is equal to um, alpha why? because this is what is happening after collision right alpha is actually the angle that the, the, that the speed of my sphere A makes with the line of centers the general angle is alpha but now I can express that alpha in terms of the angle it initially made with the line of centers and the angle of deflection because this alpha here is the total angle it makes and the total angle it makes is going to be what the initial angle plus the angle that it was deflected through so theta here you represent the initial angle that is it um, the angle the velocity the speed made initially with the line of centers now phi here represents the angle of deflection and then alpha now is now the sum of those two angles to give you the angle that the, the that the the speed of my sphere a made after collision so this is a scenario so i see that theta plus phi is equal to alpha all right so it means my phi is equal to alpha minus theta you see so phi being equal to alpha minus theta it means that um, our tan of alpha now our tan of alpha what is the tan of alpha alpha is the velocity is the speed is the angle that the speed of my sphere a made with the line of centers after collision and we can get the tangent you see because this is the angle here the tangent is just the opposite to the angle which is the same as u sine theta divided by the hypotenuse which is the, the speed along the line of centers after collision of my sphere a that's trigonometry opposite on adjacent gives me the tangent of of that angle so tan of alpha is equal to the opposite which is u sine theta divided by the adjacent which is v of a so our tan of alpha is u sine theta divided by v of a but um our, our sine theta is what our our theta is pi on 4 it means my tan alpha is equal to u sine pi on 4 divided by v of a sine pi on 4 is over 2 on 2 so and then v of a we found it initially it was this u on 4 is 1 minus e times root 2 so our tan alpha we our root 2 can cancel now 4 reverses and goes up and divides with 2 to give us 2 the u cancels so we, are, we have tan alpha to be 2 divided by 1 minus e all right but since our phi is equal to alpha minus theta it means that the tan of phi is equal to the tan of alpha minus theta now from the um identity the tan of alpha minus theta is equal to the tan of alpha minus the tan of theta divided by 1 plus the tan of alpha the tan of theta you can verify your formula booklet in case you have forgotten the formula all right so since it is the same as the tan of phi it means the tan of phi is equal to the tan of alpha minus the tan of theta divided by 1 plus the tan of alpha times the tan of theta but what do we know we know that the tan of alpha is 2 divided by 1 minus e minus the tan of theta theta is pi on 4 divided by 1 plus the tan of alpha times the tan of theta so simplifying we get the tan of phi to be tan of tan of pi on 4 is 1 so we get 2 on 1 minus e minus 1 divided by 1 here is also 1 divided by 1 plus 2 minus 2 divided by 1 minus e so we simplify this we are going to get the tan of phi to be equal to 1 plus e divided by 3 minus e but it was given originally that phi is equal to pi on 6 because it is the angle of deflection because phi a was deflected by that angle so since phi is equal to pi on 6 we can find tan phi tan phi is going to give us tan phi on 6 which is root 3 divided by 2 so since tan phi is equal to 1 plus e over 3 minus e then our 1 plus e over 3 minus e will give us root 3 divided by 2 because it is the same value of tan phi now from there you can cross multiply and then we we express our e in terms all right we we express our our e like we we try to see if the proof is okay 
all right so we first of all cross multiply we get this expression we now get this expression and then finally we divide both sides by 3 plus 3 we get this expression now we need to rationalize by multiplying top and bottom of the denom of, of the of the expression of e by the um, conjugate of the denominator all right so doing that we we expand that's just simplification we expand we expand and then finally we get the proof e is equal to 2 root, root 2 root 3 minus 3 